This is something rather rare in the crystal radio world. It's an inductively tuned crystal radio and the tuning is done by sliding this ferrite bar in and out. So let's go see how you can build one for yourself. It's really rather simple. The main component here will be the tube and on this end we're going to wrap a coil and over here is where the ferrite goes as you slide it out. The uh, trick to the ferrite is it comes very rough. You can see the difference in color. This one is about as rough as fine sandpaper. And so what I do is, I, in fact, I sand it off and then spray it with some acrylic lacquer, uh, clear acrylic lacquer. And then it makes it slide much more nicely like that. Let's see, next step. Uh, you do not need this flange. You do not need to 3D print this. In fact, I ordered some PVC tubing and also some acrylic and it just, I don't know, it's really slow in coming. So I decided to move ahead with this. Uh, if you're just going to use a plain tube, all you do is take something like this tube, you drill a hole in the block and you mount it in the block and put a screw through it so that the uh, ferrite won't slide out that end. Okay, got that covered. Uh, next is we just have this block here and it's screwed to the end by these two screws right here. So nothing tricky about that. Let's get this out of the way and look at the rest of it. So this is a wooden block that supports the tube so it doesn't get knocked down, bent, broken off, whatever. And I'm thinking about putting a band over here so that, over this way, so that uh, it doesn't bounce off of here. But that's something I'm still thinking about. Over here are our connections. Uh, this a resistor will go here. The two screws here will be the earphone connections. Um, between these will be a will be our diode. The uh, one side of the coil will come here, and the other side of the coil will go over here, if I remember right. I will put the circuit diagram in the back, and then after I finish it and test it, I'll make sure that I'm telling you correctly. So this is the antenna. This is the ground. And over here, I've left space for a mineral detector for a future. This cutout is just because uh, this was uh, recycled from another project, so that's not important. You can just use a plain old square piece of wood. I'll put all these dimensions down in the uh, description. And yeah, I think that's it. So my next job is to go and wind the coil, and it's going to be a scatter wound coil. So what I need to do is the wire needs to be laid on here at between 10 and 20 degrees, and you just wrap down this way, leave space in between the windings till you get down here. The problem is when you pull tight on this, it wants to, uh, the coil wants to scrunch back up this way. So you wind it a little bit loosely and get down here, tape it off and put glue on it. And then when you go back this way, the new windings will lay in between the old ones and it won't be so much of a problem. And then you just put down a hundred turns or on this one, I'm going to try to go with uh, 120 turns because this was one of my samples. This is 100, and you can see that the coil here is longer than this one. And so I'll need a little bit more, more turns in order to get the uh, 512 microhenries that I need. Um, yeah, I think that covers it all. So what I need to do is go away, wind this up, and then come back, we'll finish assembling it, and we will be uh, ready to demo it. I uh, brought this up from downstairs, and you can see how I have put down the first layer, and you can see that they're at a slight angle, like that. Yeah, and I have stabilized it with glue and some tape on this end. The glue is not yet hard enough to remove the tape and to continue on. But the next step will be to remove the tape and then to wrap thread, just plain old cotton sewing thread or polyester sewing thread on each end to stabilize the first layer. Because once the first layer is down then and, and stable with glue and thread, then it's a much easier time to wrap. And the next layer will go in between each of these windings. And then it comes down this way and then it just does the same thing. It comes back this way and you lay it in between the, the spaces and you go back and forth until you have the number of desired windings. Okay, so that's it for this piece. I will go down and, and uh, once this is dry and ready to go, I'll put down the rest of the layers and I will be back. Here is our setup all put together. Uh, there are three changes I would make 
if, well, in fact, I'll probably make a couple of them, but if I were going to start from scratch, yeah, there's three things I would do differently. Just let's go around and see what we did to build this. Here's our ground and here is our antenna connection. Over here is the diode. It's underneath here, so it's hard to see. But that's one of the changes I would make. I don't know what I was thinking. In fact, I was originally planning on putting the diode right here, which is where I would put it. Because when I put my mineral detector in right here, it would be easier to make the connections if it was there. But anyway, it is there. And okay, so that is the diode. This is a 3D printed tube. If I had to do it again, and I may do it again, I would make it uh, PVC tubing or acrylic because it's tougher. Uh, the uh, 3D print has grain in it like wood and like wood it'll break easily along the grain and so yeah the grain stands in here like this and it'll break very easily. I tested it. It'll snap there pretty easily. So that's one of the reasons I put in this uh, thing is so that it doesn't get lifted up or whatever by this and some strength. It'll add some strength. Another thing is the coil changed. The tap is here now. It was originally down here. Both taps were here. Now one of them's here and one of them's here. And the reason is that when I tested the, the rig, it was very scratchy. The sound was very coarse. And that's usually an indication you have too many turns. And in fact, if you get way too many turns, you'll start getting reverb, which is kind of cool. But uh, yeah, so I unwound some and kept testing it, kept unwinding some and ended up with about, uh, I think it was 105 or 107, I think it was 107 turns before I got a uh, good sound out of it. Here is the resistor and then the headphone connections, the head earphones over here. And that's pretty much it. So now we need to go over, hook it up to an antenna and a ground and see what it'll do for us. Here we have our typical setup with the oscilloscope back here. It's hooked to the audio output. And yeah, I cannot play other people's music on my videos or YouTube takes them down and that doesn't help either one of us. So uh, you can see back here the audio output. And uh, one of the mistakes I made was I ran the coil too close to the ferrite bar. And so it's interacting even though it's all the way out. It's uh, interacting with the coil. So I needed to stop the coil over here or make this longer and, and you know, give myself some space in there, whatever. Okay, so let's try tuning this. Make sure I get my hand out of the way. And you can see we're coming in on the first station. Oh, going past the first station. So there's a guy talking to us. Another guy talking. That's the second station. A little bit of bleed over from the first, but not too bad. Woman talking. Oh, there she is. That's much clearer. There's a guy talking, but it's, but it's being bled over from the last station. There's some music, but again, getting a little bit of bleed over from the last. So we have the first station here really clear. Second station really clear. Third station, not so much. So depending on the time of day, I've gotten up to four and a half stations. So four stations very clear and one eh. So yeah, it works if you're looking for a, a crystal radio with a tunable inductor on it. Uh, this is, I think is a good choice. Yeah, it's not a contesting rig but uh, the output is very clear. The sensitivity is mediocre uh, and the selectivity is, is better, slightly better than average, but otherwise, yeah, it's not expensive to build and it's easy to build. 
So yeah, there we have it. Uh, one of the few uh, inductor radios I plan on building. I hope you found that useful and interesting in your crystal radio experimentation.